Hey what's up guys, this is 3D Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And this time I want to talk about how you can light your interiors with area lights. But the trick is to build geometry around your lights so you get this more specific beautiful fall off like here or like this one, okay? And obviously you won't get that pattern without geometry. So if you just have an area light here, you would have just a plain boring 100 degree light fall off into your scene. But if you build your own lamp geometry around it, you can direct the light with your geometry. For example, here is just a hole and then the light is casting a beautiful fall off like this one. Or in the top of it, there are like holes drilled inside of this metal framing and therefore you will get something like that, all right? So so the principle is pretty simple and <laughs> that's just how uh, reality works, right? If there is an opening, then light can come through. If it's closed, you won't get light. Simple as that. And this is another scene where we also have this really beautiful light fall off. So I think this looks just amazing. And I combine it with another lamp. So here is a light inside of it and it will cast light from the top and from the bottom. So beautiful, amazing stuff. Let me just show you a couple of still frames. So just see how great this technique is. And I wouldn't even call it technique. I mean, this is just logical thinking, right? If you need some specific follow, you have to build geometry around your lamp, right? Uh, just a couple more renderings here. And I think we are good to go into Cinema 4D and just build a couple of lamps, right? All right, before we continue with the training, let me just tell you on Patreon 3D Bonfire, this is my learning platform and for a little amount of money, you get amazing courses, all right? So just feel free to subscribe for a month or so and see if it's the right training for you. But right now, for example, there is the Master Lighting in 3D course, which already has like one, two, three, four lessons where I really want to turn you into a pro with all the lighting techniques, but I also share with you assets, um, scene files, X particle setups and training and all of the good stuff. So just be sure you connect with me on 3D Bonfire on Patreon. Okay. And also feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel 3D Bonfire plus connect with me on Instagram. It's Marcus Gonza 3D and just share your work with me. All right. So let's continue with the training. All right, so let me just give you a couple of ideas here. I think this one would be amazing to build it. It's also really nice how it is interacting with the glass here. So we could build something like this. These ones are pretty simple and you get this indirect light where you cast the light mainly to the wall and then it is bouncing off. Okay, so interesting effect. We could go for something with glass to get beautiful refractions, but I think we won't do that now. I would more aim for something simple like this one. So this is nice. You can see the fall off here. Okay, this is also pretty nice. And this fall off looks really amazing. But I think we will go for something like this one. Okay, so I already built this one and I will show you how I did it. And then you just have it in your assets. And when you have your next room, you can say, oh, I want to use this light, put it in the scene and uh, just put it wherever you need it, right? Let's just go to Cinema 4D and have some fun. All right, and just a quick example. So this was my main scene where I have different elements inside of it that you can see when I just deactivate the light in my standing lamp, I will get something like this with just a little bit of ambient light. But if you enable it, you will get this beautiful fall off. All right, so now let's go into a new scene and build this one and I think build simple lamps this should be my file all right so let's start from scratch and build this lamp all right so let's start in a new scene I just have a human sized figure here this lady for a size measurement also a statue and three of my lamps that I modeled so this is a ceiling rig a small lamp and a bigger one and I think we want to start with this one and I feel a little bit sorry that a little bit of uh, modeling is involved in this course but sometimes uh, you just have to do it right so of course you can buy these models these lamps on uh, some platforms in the internet like Turbo Squid. But I think this time we just want to have a little bit of fun and hold down STRTA to select all of the points, MS to bevel it and do something like this maybe. I just think this will be an interesting shape if we bevel the points on the edges. All right, so, so far so good. Let's also select all of the lines 
STDA, then MS, and now let's bevel the lines also. So let's do something around this. Let's go to the attributes and let's just give it a little bit of subdivisions here. So I just put it to two, okay? Without it, you can see it's like this, but I think I just want to have this really smooth. So let's go to four and decrease the offset to 0 0.1. And I think this will be a nice value here. So, so it's this really sharp, okay? So maybe, maybe we just go for something like 0.2 to give it just a little bit more of um, roundness here and I think we are good to go. Okay, perfect. So now let's just drill a hole inside of it. So let's just grab a cylinder for now. Let's put it here. Let's position it a little bit better. Mm, let's go to the height. Let's put it to 100, for example, the radius of 15 or let's say eight. No, four, that's better. Let's put it here. Okay, that's good. I just want to have more rotation subdivision. So let's put it to 100. Just give me the line shading. Okay, I think this is good. Now let's just put this one into an editable object. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's put it here. And I think I just want to see this one in X-ray mode because I want to change the cylinder just a little bit because in the Boolean operation, I want to include something like this one. Okay, so this shape, but also like a bevel here. Okay, and therefore I just want to go to the cylinder and change it ever so slightly. So let's select the inner rings by holding down UL and then select both of them. Let's make this a little bit more wide. Okay, and now I think I just want to say UI to select the inverted selection. Let's scale it. Hmm, okay, no, I wasn't expecting that. To be honest, let's just make a KL a loop cut here and there. Now UL, select only these rings, hold down shift to select both of them. Now scale it and do something like this maybe. So now I just want to put both of them into a bool. First comes the cube then the cylinder and now let me just see how this is looking okay so now you can see because i changed the shape of my cylinder i will also get a cut like this one and i think this is already how i want to have this object so press c and this is our base object i just select both of them right click and connect and delete and there you go all right perfect so get rid of the x-ray and let's continue with the uh, with this framing here okay so grab the spline tool f4 to go to the side now i just click here there there and somewhere around here okay this is good so let's just select both of these points click on the scale tool hold down shift and let's just put this one to zero so these ones are really on top of each other now i select these two points right click and say chamfer for example click and drag continue here and do something like this one that is perfect okay cool so now i think we want to grab something like a cube let's put it to three by three in the thickness okay that seems to be a good value all right and i think this one needs more segments because we want to spline wrap it around the spline so maybe even 150 and i guess we also want to give it a little bit of fillet of course this is way too much but something like this okay so this is like a really minor detail, but it will make the edges ever so slightly more believable. Okay, now let's grab a spline wrap, put it inside of the cube. And now let's spline wrap it around the spline, choose the right axis. No, that was the wrong axis. And you will have something like this. Okay, perfect. But now I think this is too much. So let's just put this one to let's say 50 okay that's good let's duplicate this one and let's say the next one will be just a little bit more narrow and now let's put this one to 60 so you can see you will get something like smaller pieces which feel like they could be put inside of the first element okay so it is coming out of this one and will stretch but you could also put it back inside of it okay so let's do this once more let's make it even smaller now let's put it to 70 okay or 75 already that's good one more time let's put it to 85 or 90 that's even better 
better, one more version, and this time I just put it to 100, and I think I forgot to make it more narrow, so put it to 0 0.5, and this one to 0 0.75. All right, and there you have this metal piece. Now, let's go on to the main object, this frame around our light, okay? So therefore, I would say we just grab a sphere, put it up there, let's put it to 30. All right, give it like 100 subdivisions here. I think that's better, so put it here or you know what maybe we just put it there maybe we don't need to have this straight piece here so you know what i will just make this one a little bit smaller put it to 94 that's better maybe i would just kill this point and now i just want to go with my sphere up to here for example and i think it's way too big so put it to 20 uh, still too big put it to 15 no i just put it to 18 and then drag it there make it editable and let's just hold on ul let's select i would say this one uf to select the connected and delete them I think this is already working, okay? Very cool. So let's put some holes inside of it. All right, and therefore, I think I will just use another cylinder. Let's make this one really small. Let's put it to three. Let's put it up here. Let's put it to 1.5 and maybe 30. Okay, so this one, I will just put it here, hold down Alt and put it in a cloner. Now let's put the cloner to a radial. Okay, let's decrease the radius to somewhere around here. Let's give it like seven elements. All right, hold down Alt G to put the cylinder in a null. Now I will just rotate the cylinder a little bit. Now let's see what is the right axis. Okay, something like this. I will just angle it a little bit. Let's make the radius bigger. Do something like this, for example. These ones, they don't need to be in that big. Okay, that's perfect. Let's grab another cloner. Let's increase the radius, put it here. And maybe this one will have more elements. So let's just put it to 12, for example. Okay. I like it. Now I will just select both of the cylinders, give me more rotation segments, kill the height segments, we don't need these ones. Just put both of them into a connect and press C. So now this is one element and I think I will just grab a bool, put the sphere inside of it and the connect and there you go. <laughs> All right, not exactly. So I can see the outer ring of cylinders won't penetrate through my elements. So I guess I just want to move the element a little bit up, the, the round element, and now this should look perfect. And this looks really good. Okay, so let's hold down C, let's select both of them, click connect objects and delete, and there you go. Perfect. Now I will just hold down D to give it a little bit of thickness, something like this. And be sure you check create caps so it has an inside hull and the outside hull. Okay, perfect. So this was the modeling part. And I think we just make a axis center here again. So select the element, put the axis to all points. Okay, that's better. And now just position it where you want it to be. So that looks good. So now we will put an area light inside of it and we'll see how it looks. All right, so I think it is time to kick up Octane. I already fired up my live viewer here and I think it is working. So let me just put an area light in the scene so you can see we have this beautiful illumination now rotated 90 degrees and then just put it into our lamp element here okay and i think this is way too big so make it smaller now let's put it here and now let me just double check it i will center it more or less now you could also go inside of the element and not have it as a rectangle because right now the rectangle is only giving light in this direction 180 degrees in the negative y axis but we also want to have light on top of it so therefore i think we just want to put this one to a sphere okay so now this sphere will cast light in all directions all right so i would just position it a little bit better and to see it also on the ceiling let's just duplicate the disc let's call this one ceiling and i would just drag and drop it on the top of my scene let's just pretend this would be the, the ceiling of the room and now you can see this is pretty blurry and washed out so, so maybe first we should go to the samples maybe so what happens if i put this one to 10 all right you can see that was my fault of course 
This has nothing to do with the samples, but I think we just need to go to our render settings and I guess the DI clamp, oh, it's already set to 10. Okay, let's decrease it to one. Okay, it will clean up even faster. So be sure to adjust your clamping to the size of your scene. Okay, that looks better. And now you still can see this is really washed out. Okay, so I was expecting to have this pattern more visible also on the floor. But what we get here is some really washed out fall off. So really gradual here. So I think we just need to adjust the size of our sphere maybe. So put this one to one by one by one. Now you have to counterbalance for it by increasing the power, put it to 10,000 or maybe get rid of the surface brightness. Now decrease this again, put it to 100, put it to 30, put it to 10. All right, and you can see now we get this beautiful pattern. It's more defined also on the floor. And this has to do also with the size of your light bulb here or your sphere. So if you put this one to 10 by 10, then this will be more washed out, okay? But if you want to have it really precise, go for a low value here. I think we can even make it more precise if we go for something like this, all right? So now this is really sharp, but to be honest, this feels a little bit unnatural. So I would just go to something around one maybe. And this is basically <laughs> what I do in my scenes when I want to direct my light into a specific fall off, then I would just say you build your lamp around it. So let me see if I have a light in this one also. So you can see when I activate it, this one will give a beautiful cone on the floor and also on the top. All right, and I think there is not so much more magic behind it. You can see it's the same principle you can see in real life that I have used in my renderings here. And this is just a little tip from my side how you can direct your light in interior scenes more specific and be really precise about how sharp you want to have to fall off and just art direct your lights all right i think this is it already so just be sure you put your area lights into some beautiful lamps you can model them or of course you can download them from some marketplace like turbo squid or whatever you prefer so i will share the scene file on my patreon also if you just want to play a little bit with a really simple room and a balcony and some venetian blinds i will also share this simple scene with you there is a window and a stairway and you can just get some good angles out of it place your objects inside of it maybe you want to play with an hri a sunset from outside and when you are inside you just put a couple lamps there then you could achieve something like this one for example so i will share both scenes on my patreon as i said and um, you guys on youtube thank you so much for listening i hope that you subscribe to this channel because i will continue to put amazing stuff on it so just be sure that you subscribe all right other than that thank you so much see you next time. Bye guys.